Hello, Business 630 students, and welcome to our spring session one, eight week corporate finance class in the MBA program at the University of Laverne. My name is Rick Hassey. I am your instructor and uh, welcoming you to the first of our eight lectures every week. And uh, I've sent you some introductory information prior to today. Today is Monday, January 31st. And every Monday I will produce and send out a lecture video for the week. And that will be, then it'll be followed up by a follow-up video every Friday uh, to close out the week and our discussions. We also will have student hours every Thursday night via Zoom, where you can come on and uh, ask me questions or go over any material. This class is an online class only. There are no remote ses sessions. Everything is done through Blackboard and online. There is no official meeting classrooms via Zoom. It's online. All the materials provided you in Blackboard and you have the option of, uh, of coming to my office hours or scheduling appointments. If you cannot see me on Thursdays, I'm available throughout the week and on weekends if you would like to discuss any material with me or post questions through our discussion board, the discussion form in Blackboard and any other vehicles like email, uh, please send to me. Remember, we only use Laverne dot edu email in this class please do not send questions or information through another email site only laverne.edu email every week we have an agenda this week is agenda is to introduce our class talk about chapter six risk and return next week we'll talk about uh, time value of money the present and future values of money a good way of determining the valuation of a firm. There's a discussion post due this coming Sunday, February 6th. It's posted in Blackboard. You are to write a brief bio about yourself and also uh, pick a company you would like to follow throughout this course. So again, I welcome you all to our course. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with you. This is a format that can be very easy or very hard. The key to maintaining a good relationship with the online studies is to pick it up every other day or a couple times during the week. Do not wait until Saturday or Sunday to catch up on your work. You need a couple of days to take in data, to think about data, to analyze it, interpret it, read, study, research. You can't do it on just a Saturday afternoon. You can't do it on a Sunday afternoon. This is an MBA advanced finance course. We will be covering a lot of material. You'll be required to do a lot of research. We don't, you don't have the time to put it all into one day of work during the course of a week. I know, yes, a lot of you work. I know, yes, a lot of you are taking other classes but that does not defer you from doing the work, being prepared and asking questions. And you do that and I do my job, you'll get a lot of value out of this class. This class is helping you be a strategic decision maker at the corporate finance level, being able to manage and strategize about capital, how to raise capital and how to determine the use of capital. Remember in finance, the goal is to maximize shareholder value. And to maximize shareholder value, you invest in assets that provide the greatest return. Or if those assets do not provide the greatest return, how do you strategize to work through that? And there can't be better examples of companies throughout the last couple of years struggling with this, with the, with the pandemic. And that's gonna be one of our themes throughout this course. I hope a lot of you have taken the time to look at the Blackboard setup of our class. Uh, every week has been set aside with information for you. I'll be adding to that uh, to those weeks as we go forward. The course syllabus calendar information is now set up where you have, there's an introduction video. If you've not seen that introduction video, please do so. It introduces the course. There's our course syllabus and schedule. You wanna take a brief, quick look at our calendar. You just click on this file folder and up comes our calendar of, of our class. All kinds of information to get you up to speed. Here's our important dates of this coming spring session. 
Our first case is due February 13th. We have four cases during the course of our eight weeks, all of them in different formats, writing, APA, spreadsheet, PowerPoint, four cases throughout the semester, and then a fifth case, which is our course assessment case, which is a paper and a spreadsheet formatted case, which is due on March 20th. So a lot of work to do. We'll have a variety of different sessions to get you prepared for all these. And to add to your questions, this eight weeks goes by very quickly. If you need to get a hold of me, there's my email address, there's my phone number and text message. There's my mugshot. Ooh, I need makeup. And there's a brief bio about me. So please take advantage of all these resources in Blackboard and the Zoom and YouTube links. Yes, we have a YouTube playlist where a lot of videos are stored for you at your convenience. You can go to the YouTube site for this class, Business 630 for the spring one session of 2022. At that, you can have a look at all the videos associated with this. I also post them here and where you can link in and watch. Here's our student hours link on Zoom for Thursday evenings. This is where I will be at my computer in my office two hours every Thursday available to add to your questions. And then you have the student discussion forum where I post work or discussion points that I'd like you to do, but also it's a place where you can post questions and concerns about the class and I will answer them for you. You have a discussion forum this week where you put to post a brief biography about yourself just so we can get to know you. Remember this discussion post is has accessible to all our students. Everybody can see your answers and your posting. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. And then to set us up for the session, I'd like you to select a company, a corporate corporation from the Fortune 500, a public owned corporation that I'd like you to select, which we'll be doing some work on that corporation throughout the session of eight weeks. One thing I'd like you to find out about that uh, discussion or that corporation is the current beta in the marketplace of that company that you have selected. Beta refers to our first week's discussion of risk and return. Beta, as a lot of you probably know, is a calculation, a statistical calculation telling you the relationship of the return of a company vis-a-vis -vis the return in the market. The higher the beta, the less likelihood of sound performance by the company. Uh, beta is an indicator of how you deviate from the averages of the market. A higher beta means you deviate more in return from the market, and thus your company is considered inconsistent and, highly, and higher risk to invest in. We'll be talking about that these first couple of weeks. So that discussion post is due February. I will look at it throughout the week and answer any questions on that. As you can see, some students have already posted and are beginning their work in this discussion forum. And uh, take a look at week number one in our Blackboard. There's our agenda that uh, you saw at the beginning of class. There is a uh, article that I'd like all you to read this week, which will be the subject of my Friday update video. Efficient, chaotic, what's the new finance? Please read that article. It sets us up for other work throughout our session. Here's a brief uh, video on the definition of risk and return. Here's a PowerPoint presentation that you can look at to go over the key parts of risk and return. And then there's some subsequent other videos talking about beta and the relationship of risk and return. Please take a look at all these. They're also posted in our YouTube website, but there are ways of getting you background for our discussion topics in this course. Also, if you not, have not already done so, please take a few minutes to look at the syllabus, which details our course gives you specific information about key uh, links, Blackboard, there's our YouTube channel, Twitter, Wall Street Journal. We will be using all these throughout our class, a course description, our topics that we will cover in this class, 
Again, the textbook, as I've talked to you before, is optional, but if you so to use it, it's the 16th edition of Financial Management Theory and Practice. But again, all the material from the textbook is in Blackboard. No need to purchase. Talking about our grades, again, as I said earlier, we have five cases, each worth 20%. No group work in this class. Everything is individual. Our grading system, academic honesty, naturally being an online class, that's an issue. Your responsibilities, my responsibilities, some key information about services offered the student at the University of Laverne. And then our course schedule and definitions of our course schedule throughout the semester. So please take time out to review that as we get into our first week of study. This PowerPoint I will post along with this video when I uh, post it to our class Blackboard site later on this evening. Uh, this is an introduction video talking about the basic philosophy of this corporate finance class. Corporate finance is important to management because the knowledge of capital budgeting, capital structure, and working capital provides for effective decision making Excuse me. If the corporation is to maximize profits and stay competitive for future success. In other words, if you remember your days back in accounting, the accounting equation assets equals liabilities plus equity. Liabilities and equity are the capital structure of a company. It's where you get the capital to invest in assets that produce profits, cash flow, and return. It is job of the financial manager to manage this capital and provide for effective return of those assets. That's what corporate finance is about. And that's the basics of our study in this class. There's three investment principles or three principles to finance that we will be discussing throughout this session. The investment pr principle, where do we invest our dollars to earn a, a return that's greater than the cost of those dollars. A great example of that is if I go to a bank and borrow money and the bank charge me, charges me 7% interest on that money. Okay, I sign the bank papers and I agree to pay that money back plus 7% interest. I'm gonna take that money I got from the bank and invest it or purchase assets. Those assets will create a return. I wanna earn a return off those assets that are greater than 7% of the cost of getting that capital. That's a simple investment principle. Many people call that cost of capital the hurdle rate. I like to call it the weighted average cost of capital. Either way, you wanna invest in assets that create a greater return than the cost of money to achieve the purchase of those assets. The financing decisions. Okay, where do you get the capital? There are three main legal sources of capital to purchase assets. And that's the capital structure of a company. Debt, the borrowing of money, either short term through working capital debt, like accounts payable, accruals, non-interest bearing debt, sometimes called current liabilities, or long-term debt, debt that you have many years to pay back, but it's interest bearing. Debt is a source of capital, short-term and long-term. Then there's equity, private equity, which is hedge funds. If any of you ever watched the TV show Shark Tank, that's private equity. Hedge funds, investment funds, venture capital, private investors investing in companies. Or public equity, the issuance of stock in the market. We're going to be concentrating mainly on that form of equity in our cat class, but there's two forms of equity, privately funded equity or publicly funded or through the markets. That's the second form of raising financing capital. And finally, profits. The making of profits is a source of capital. If you make more revenue than you had expenses on managing those assets, you make a profit. And those profits can be used to reinvest back into the company to grow. Pr 
profits are another form of raising capital. Then a key final decision or investment principle from finance is the dividend decision. How do we distribute those returns back to our investors? It's pretty easy with bankers. You just pay them interest and pay back the principal. But also it's a bit more difficult if you have stockholders or private equity managers. Do you give them a piece of the business? Do you pay out dividends? That dividend decision-making or that return decision-making can be crucial to the sound management of a company. We're gonna be talking about that capital asset pricing model, which is a discussion in our first couple of weeks of our class. What is, what is the required rate of return expected on a company's stock? And it's all based on the return of the stock in the market and relative to the risk of that stock. It's very simply, it's the risk-free interest rate, which is a 10-year United States Treasury yield, plus the market premium, which is a definition of the current market rate of return minus the risk-free rate, times the beta or the risk of the stock. That's why one of the reasons why I wanted you to find the beta of your company this week. That leads us into the discussions on Friday in our update video and into next week. If I was an investor in Apple and I had, a, I'm going to be demanding based on the risk of Apple with a beta of 1.22 based on the risk in the market return of 8.38, based on the zero risk in the market of 1.62, I would demand almost 12% return on my stock if I invest in Apple. If I don't get that return or Apple says I'm not gonna be able to get that return, I won't buy the stock. If I already own the stock and I'm not making that return, the option is to sell. Another example of this is called the cost of equity. What does it cost a company to find return off invested capital from their shareholders or the equity holders of a company? We'll be talking a lot about this these first few weeks. There's a key term in corporate finance called intrinsic value. What that means is the true value of a company. The true value means the generated cash flow that, that those assets of the company are creating in relationship to what it costs you to get that capital. And that's called intrinsic value. Many investors, many bankers, many employees of companies always wanna know the true value of a company. You can get the market value of a business by taking the current stock price of a company and multiplying it by the number of shares of stock outstanding. Well, that's well and good, but that, that does not include debt in that equation. One of the true indicators for leading investors and for corporate finance officers is what is the true value of our company in relationship to the cash flow that it's generating and what it cost us to get the capital. That's called WAC. And it's a discounted analysis, taking future cash flows and discounting them back to today. If the discounting use of discounting uh, is not familiar to you, that's one of the topics of our discussion next week on the time value of money. What is discounting? Taking money in the future and determining its value today. Free cash flows is another very important topic of finance. It's how much cash you generate from the operations of your business. And that additional cash from operations is used to pay off interest, pay back debt, pay dividends, buy back stock, invest in other assets. Free cash flow is a great term we'll be using in this course. Once you have that, you can determine the weighted average cost of capital. And I'm sure a lot of you in your prior finance courses have talked about this. It's the relationship of the capital structure, what percent of your company is in debt, what percent is funded by equity, that percent is weighted to the cost of those two entities to determine your weighted average cost of capital. Not to worry, we'll be spending a lot of time on this in our class. 
And another key indicator or another key thing about this class is understanding a relationship of corporate finance to the real world around us. And one of the ways I do this is through key financial and investment indicators. The relationship of equity in the market, the relationship of credit or debt, the relationship of commodities, of currency values. And if you notice in these two slides, I have looked at the eight main indicators that I track or a lot of corporate finance people track of the market. The first three, the Dow Jones Industrial 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Index, the top 30 stocks in America as determined by the Wall Street Journal. The Standard & Poor's 500 Index, which is the top 500 stocks according to the company called Standard & Poor's. Who is Standard & Poor's? They're kind of like the, uh, if any of you uh, are familiar with personal credit, like your FICO score, Experian, Experian, those type of things. Standard & Poor's keeps track of the credit ratings of major American companies. And then the NASDAQ index, which is the over-the-counter exchange, and that's a listing of the index of 2,500 small to mid-sized corporations in America. If you noticed from December 31st, 21 to 20, the markets or the equity markets had a pretty good year. But then also we look at the credit markets. And one of the leading indicators of credit and the cost of credit is what is called the risk-free interest rate, the 10-year United States Treasury rate. If I lend $1,000 today to the United States government and I, they promise to pay me back that $1,000 in 10 years, according to the yield on that Treasury on December 31st, they would pay me 15 bucks a year in interest, 1.512% of $1,000. 15 bucks. That's compared to last year. If they wanted to pay me, if I lend $1,000 last 2020, notice the interest rate there, 0.91%. Not very good. Nine bucks compared to 15 today. Interest rates are going up. You read about and hear about that all the time, especially if you're business students. Inflation is going up. The cost of money is going up. That influences the lot of return in the market. That's the risk-free interest rate. The leading commodity indicators, oil and gold. Oil is because it's just a major commodity around the world. And look at how the gold pr oil prices have gone up in this past year. Gold has gone down this year. Gold is like a hedge fund. It's like a hedge. You buy gold when you think the future in other investments isn't as good. Well, with the stock market earning 20%, 25% over the last year, a lot of people kept their money in the stock market and not in gold. But this, this is why companies have a pretty easy time getting financing. Markets are doing well. Returns are solid. People are still buying stock. And then the currency markets. As you all know, we're in, a, we're in an economic world now called globalization, borderless economies. The relationship of, of specific markets, trades, countries, and how they react to currency changes in other countries is very important. The top three indicators of the currency market, the euro to the United States dollar, the United States dollar to the Chinese yuan, and the United States dollar to the yen. Notice how those prices have either fluctuated or stay about the same in the last year. We will talk about all these indicators throughout our course because they tell us how to react our strategies based on our own company situations to what's going on in the world around us. The $100 bill, there it is right there. The Chinese won. The Euro. These are all leading currencies of the world. They're sources of capital. You read about it every day in the newspaper. Interest rates going up, Federal Reserve, the supply of money, the markets. 
we're going to use that information correlated to the t companies that you're following in our class and learn about the real world today of corporate finance and how that applies to strategies. Please read this article this week, Efficient, Chaotic, What is the New Finance? Even though this article was written in 1993, it's very relevant, relevant, relevant to our day today. So please read that. I will have a follow-up video for you on Friday, this coming week, every Friday. Well, I'll go over some more key parts of risk and return, some more definitions, and we'll finish up our topics for this week. Again, there is no graded work this week. It's just complete the discussion forum, get to know Blackboard, interact with Blackboard, and we move forward into our studies of this session. I'm available for questions, concerns via text, email, Blackboard discussion forum, or the reviews are the student hours on Thursday nights. We, next week, we'll be having individual meetings with me via Zoom, where I'll set up a schedule on Friday leading into the next week where you can pick a time during the next week and have 10, 15 minutes of getting to know Professor Hassey individually. And we'll do that next week. This week, get to know Blackboard, get to know the feel of the course of being an online corporate finance MBA student and get to know the material. And I look forward to working with you all. And uh, it's been, gonna be a, a pleasure. It'll be a lot of work, but I think you'll get a lot of value out of this class. Well, thanks everybody. We'll uh, continue on Friday. I'm around during the week, any questions? And I look forward to working with you all. Have a great week. Adios. <laughs>